Hello and welcome to episode number three of the Noodling Notes. This episode took me quite a while and it got me in a lot of headaches. I wanted to make an episode about how to change Volper octave signals or pitch signals with the Tresno, Lipsk, Erfurt and Jena. <laughs> but the first thing I noticed this beast is hard to tame and it's really unpredictable. There's beauty and things that are unpredictable. beautiful things is modulating both the octave signal in the Leibniz system but it's really at least for me hard to understand what's happening here As you can see, you can turn performance You can turn the live mode system into a live sequencing performing tool. This video is also about what you can do 
with welfare of the signals besides feeding it into an oscillator. Jam. So, but yeah, what's about this video cost me quite some nerves because there is, like in the other two videos, there was like a lot of research uh, needed to be done in the last videos, but this video is, I can't really find a way to explain really what's happening here because with effort there's a new module inside the subsystem there is really <laughs> it depends on how you tune and dress those adcs and dac clock um, outputs and inputs um, how it responds to everything it depends on what quantizer did you use i use i tried i i don't have a dedicated quantizer but right now i'm using westlich performer in quantizing mode i tried to use pam here I tried to feed it to the computer in VCV rig and they all work different and so the result is different and it's I wish I had a dedicated quantizer because then this video would be maybe a little bit more <laughs> it would have maybe I didn't need so long to finish it but yeah you have to ask now here you need to tune it not tune but like to adjust the in and outputs but as you saw in the intro video, you can use that to play the sequence. You have flips where you can flip bits, it, but also it has influence on how effort is counting. So we have effort, it's basically a binary counter and it counts from 0 to 255 and then it influences the sequence, it's changing the sequence, it's transposing the sequence and stuff and then you have Vienna and I'm sorry to say, but it's still a mystery to me. But this is a real performance thing in the whole world per octave manipulation. But yeah, I, I, I start with a quick new patch and simple and show you. Um, I hope I can show you what you can do with everything in here. As we said, let's start this step by step. So, the first thing I set up here, binary counters are already running, but doesn't matter for now, I explain that one later. The first thing I want to cover is, what's the most basic idea about um, 
manipulating more active signals. This is the original signal. Our binary counter makes it to this. And the most basic um, concept is to transpose the sequence. You need to tune it like this is the original sequence and what comes out of Tresno is simply um, unquantized um, voltages. So, and with the offset slider you can like shift the whole sequence, transpose if you will. So the most easiest thing to do first is to find the right setting for the sequence and with the gain slider um, of the output you can set the dynamic range of the or like if it goes from 0 to 1 volt or from 0 to 5 volt I don't know the exact voltages but you can set like the dynamic range If I go lower, sequence gets squashed. <laughs> right now I, I can't find a place where it's the same, but if you turn down the sequence, original sequence to like just one node. It's the same, but the problem is that the dynamic range will be different, I guess. Oh, it's the same now, we found. So everything runs to a quantizer who is set on... Have a look. Minor. Let's change this to minor pentatonic. So, as you saw, you can tune your sequence here, and you can use it creatively like I did in the intro. Um, you can tune it in the input as well, but we'll come to that later because we found a sweet spot right now. So, the next thing... The next thing you can do is, if I go back to one note sequence, you can transpose the sequence with Lipsk. This is our original sequence from the Rainier. 
you can transpose it as well. It works better if the dynamic range is not so big. But as you see, the notes change a little bit. It's not just simply transposing. If you have a source like PAMS, you can trigger these changes. And if we go back to our one note sequence, you can create new melodies with Lipsk. And you see you need to find the right inputs and the right source material. So if I go like source like <laughs> trigger sources. And of course you can use triggers or bits, Yena spits out. We come to that later because basically you create feedback loops and get kind of endless melodies. So we went from here there. If you don't want to use the feedback loop and you have you only want to use Leibniz by itself because if I if I take bits from here and feed it into Lipsk you change the information on the Leibniz data bus coming to Jena so the bit outs will behave differently every time. The more you you the more bits you patch in a feedback loop, the ever more changing gets the sequence. So if you don't want that, but you want to use um, only the Leibniz system, you can get more steady results. If we it it doesn't really work with a one note sequence because the bit out's never changing, but if I introduce some notes here, you see the bit outs from Dresno spitting out gates. And because it's an ever repeating sequence, the bit outs also repeating. I mean, they vary a little bit with the noise of the input um, converter and stuff, but it's a more steady result. And of course, it's like always with the Lightning system, you need to find the right configuration and to, to find sweet spots. So basically this bit here, bit number four on the input is like really slowly changing. You can take number five is already in use but bit number three maybe and uh, the fun part in my setup I have two lips and if effort is not activated like they basically 
it's bypassed effort. They're basically doing the same, and so you can take two different um, gates or bit outputs to manipulate the same bit. It's not that they're getting added, but it's like a more changing, a more frequent change in that one bit or the, 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 the rhythm gets. Basically you create a melodic rhythm and uh, this rhythm gets changed um, not so steadily if you use two different gate inputs. Of course I could mix the gates um, somewhere else, but yeah. Okay, so effort is a binary counter and I remove the input signal. Basically there's still some little bit of noise here. You see the bits are flipping here, the bit number zero. Um, we come to that later in the video, but you should remove Dresna from the Leibniz bus for this to work properly. And what I do is I will I will take the unquantized the unquantized output put it on the bulk proactive input and then it's more drastic So, a sequential switch, it basically counts from 0 to 255 and I would have no input here, um, I will show that in a minute. It's stepping really one, it's, it, it, it steps what you put into Lipsk, but we'll come to that later, but I can demonstrate it here, but you need to remind there's a little bit of noise of this input converter. Um, if I put binary numbers in here, you see the steps it, it takes are bigger. Because the binary numbers are bigger and so you can create sequences who seem endless. So, that's great for generative stuff. Let's put in the quantizer. Tune down a bit. Remember with the offset you can transpose up and down. Okay, enough of that. So we have this sequence <laughs> slack always repeating itself. <coughs> Remember there's still no, the original sequence is not coming in right now. It's only the binary counter. So, of course we want a sequence that's a bit boring. So we can, it has a reset input. Oh, what I forgot to mention, of course, effort. Um, I have the setting like on the back there is a jumper and I set it on external clock so that it takes the clock from Dresno and you need to activate it and with this switch now there is no clock at all or you can clock it with the clock increment so, or you use that external clock 
and yeah it's um, divided by one so it's basically the same but if you use the internal clock of dress no you need to divide by 64,000 but it's still <laughs> really fast only a small crash course so we have a reset input that's better or but yeah, we're only getting the same notes because it always starts. But you can change it, of course, again with the Lipsk. Because you remember, it um, counts differently with whatever binary number you put in here. And again, we can animate that. And now the fun part. We want to modulate it with in with itself. So and you see, Dresno is always resetting itself and it spits out some bits here, some gates. So we can now create bit number four to five. No, no, bit number six doesn't spit there. Yeah. No. We can create new melodies and they're repeating themselves. There is sometimes changes, but it's um, <laughs> an organic nature. It has an organic nature. Most of the time it's repeating, but sometimes it gets out of the repetition. But yeah, you can get creative with it. The drifting, the drifting occurs sometimes. Right now, not because I tuned it right, but you really need to find it just these, um, the combination of these two. There are some points where it's fluctuating, like I guess because the voltages um, who get spit out are really close um, in between values where the quantizer decides if it, take, if, if it takes this node or that node and so some drifting occurs. And that's what I meant, I guess. The, the Westlicht is a great device, um, or the performer from Westlicht is a great device, but it's a great sequencer, modulation sequencer, everything. And the quantizing works pretty good, but it's I guess not uh, it's not made for it and I guess there are more precise quantizers out there but I don't have one 
where this would not occur. And with Pamela quantizing it works if you have steady voltages but when I put it after the Leibniz system it didn't work out. It was too much shifting, too much chaos, it's too laggy. But yeah, we have created this in new sequence. Let's bring in the original sequence again. See, it changed already. The original sequence is still this. Let's introduce some notes and see what happens. And getting transported with. So you can still interact with your Rene or whatever you have. And then again, you have this gate outputs here. And of course it depends um, what reset value you have here. I have times two right now. Let's make it shorter. Or you can make it longer, times four. But the more chaotic it gets, times eight, Sorry for the bad sound, it's only the camera sound. But what I'm doing now, we want to explore um, a patch described in ModWiggle forum. And therefore, I, I should turn down the power. I hope this works, yes. What we're gonna do is, we unplug let me unplug this as well. So, what we're gonna do is we unplug Tresno from Lipsk so that this is no loop, so there is no data from Lipsk and um, from Tresno going to Lipsk. Getting out of this case. Here you can see there's this jumper, and right now it's set to external, so the clock comes from Tresno. What we need to do for this patch to work and is to put it on the other side to internal clocking so it uses the I guess 2 megahertz or something like that internal clock and you can divide it here by 64,000 or you can of course use the clock input what we now have is Dresno's ADC out of the chain and the chain starts with Lipsk into Effort into Lipsk into Jena back into the DAC of Dresno. We still use that one. So I'll discuss the patch with you first. Um, DFM is the bass drum and it's driven by a simple clock by PAMS. 
then Taiso Taiko here is making the symbols and is driven by White Gallop which is driven again by a faster clock by the pants and the snare drum polar bear from Pittsburgh is driven by a bit out from effort the main patch is the right side of endorphins wave shaping output into the low pass gate from the terminal it's driven by this envelope there is some um, FMing going on like amplified FMing the whole melody of course is driven by the Leibniz system and in this case um, like I said I decoupled the dress now let's go closer to it and the next idea I want to discuss is from the community of the Mod Wiggler forum and it was proposed that you take the ADC from Tresno out of the equation because also Tresno pointed it out in the forums um, this converter can cause noise and the slightest noise will interfere with everything with what happening between like if you put a, a signal into Dresdner it doesn't really matter because um, the noise is really small but if you want to if you want to have no input even if you put the sliders down there could be some slight noise oh I forgot to focus again but I guess it's clear so and what we now have if I remove these patch cables here and remove the reset and reset the effort you see there is nothing happening you can now decide if you clock effort externally or if you take the clock internally I will show you so if we take the clock internally there is nothing happening because there is no input to effort and effort only adds to the binary counter what's before and there is no state right now you can not even go to the next step so but what if we flip a bit in lips or enter a bit if we flip zero it would be the equal to one in decimal system that there is a sequence going on because it's not starting from the beginning again because every number you put in you need to divide through 255 and if it's not equal dividable it will take like maybe I have no idea 70 attempts to go back to the beginning so the assumption is like for your brain that it's a never endless like continuous sequence 
so of course we can put the reset input inside so we can almost repeating sequence out of it let's go back into the quantizer and I need to say um, I clocked the DAC because so I um, the, the, like the output of Dresno is clocked so in this case I can use the internal clock of effort um, to get steps but in the main patch I clock them both and everything like the Dresno output Efforts clocking and the envelope generators are an Euclidean pattern from PAMS to make it more interesting. Of course, we can again flip bits, so, but remember, we're not flipping bits, we're entering binary numbers, and in this, um, like in the amount of the binary number you put in, you count through efforts um, binary counter. So we basically changing over time how it's counting. Bring in some bass drum. Already nice. And you need to remember there is nothing in the input, we're creating this sequence with the Leibniz binary subsystem. You can still kind of transpose with the second lips. of this patch is Jena like in the um, proposal of in, in, on the module patch so if I activate now It depends on, like, this really depends on um, which bank you're on and on which shape you're on in the bank. But he pointed out that bank C and shape 248 is basically a square wave. So as you can hear, change but this bank is surrounded by stair stepping waveforms and you get interesting results Kind of arpeggios. Of course, we can animate this with an LFO. My LFO is not synced right now. And bring the bits back in. And it also depends 
where you're shaping all this. So basically you can animate shape as well. Thanks. And it always depends what you put into lips. coincidence but also the fun part about this that if you know okay let's take the LFO out you could recreate this because you know where your patch cables are that makes it a little bit more unpredictable of course especially like with feedback loops like this but basically if you patch everything the same Put the same clock in here, the same reset in here, the same clock in here. You're on the same bank and the same shape. The face knob is not braided, of course, but you need to remember where this, like, like you could recreate this and it should be the same melody. It's really nice right now. 248 is really nice. Small variation in shapes for the alpha. You can find some really nice sweet spots. And of course, you can make the center of the shape always to another point. Unquantized output of Leibniz into the Tyson Dyke of of the input.
this is an instant ambient machine for sequencing, as you can hear. taking the reset output out of effort. That's the second oscillator put into it. And it's a mixture of the unquantized, oh no, of the quantized Dresner signal and make noise Rene sequence. Thank <laughs> you. 